Good evening, folks. I'm your host, Teacher Bob Parker. Welcome to the Colin Show, where we hear personal stories, diagnose, heal, and hopefully give some closure. It will be full spring in April 16, which exactly began three and a half weeks ago, the month of the International Women's Day, which is about equality and the right to vote. For those who weren't aware of this new season, it's a season of new beginnings, vernal equinox, where the Earth resolution around the sun is complete and the equator is face to face with the sun. An astronomical phenomena. New flowers bloom, more birds chirp, the day is longer. It's in the pagan belief a transformation, renewal, balance, and change. In other faith Christian based believe it's the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This may come as a shocker for some women who do their spring cleaning to make way for their new designer shoes, clothes, and jump in new relationship under the tag new me, new season, instead of doing some alone reboot time. Or men who think it's a good idea to convince their partners to have anal sex or do gangbangs at private parties. Nonetheless, the Dutch who are the descendants of the Geltish Germans celebrated the feast called Ostara some 12,000 years ago with a lot of sugar and rabbits to the goddess of dawn and fruitfulness also translated in Ostara Godin van Sons Opgang and Vruchtbaarheid. People welcome to You Are a Mess. Hello, Debbie, who I'm speaking with. What's up? What's on your mind? Hey, Tichaba, how are you doing? I just want to vent and rant. Go ahead. I am today your priest, therapist, listener, and advisor. I just hate how perfection has become the new obsession. I had a boyfriend for three years. More like an online relationship, real boyfriend and girlfriend thing. We texted each other a lot. We sent each other pictures and our love was growing. A few weeks ago, we met for the very first time. We went to dinner slash hookah bar. For all our listeners who don't know what a hookah lounge or bar is, Debbie enlightened us. You know, it's just a bar with fancy elaborate pipes on every table where you can smoke flavored tobacco. So anyway, the encounter with a supposed boyfriend of mine was really awkward. So we were sitting across each other, not saying much. I was nervously staring at him and he was just staring at me with no emotion, dead eye. What seemed like forever was 20 minutes or so. The vibe was effed up. I mean, I'm not asking for much. I'm not an IG model, but I'm nice. He knows that from my unfiltered pictures. I can cook. I have my own car, a nice apartment. I'm cute. I'm looking for a guy that we can text each other all day, every day, have nice dinners, get sweet texts from him after work. Hello, precious. How was your work? Emoji, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Before I close my eyes to sleep at night, I am falling in love with this man. I am feeling him. I'm talking about real boyfriend and girlfriend status. You know what I mean to ship up? As you deserve, Debbie. As you should. Real love. <laughs> right? That's what I'm looking for. I feel like three years is down a fucking drain. Being catfished without really being catfished, you know? But I know how he looks like, so I'm not being catfished. I feel like social media is so a messed up thing to be on. It's, it's every freaking thing. It's the algorithm. It's the body goals. It's the couple goals. It's the annoying freaking challenges. It's the old versus new generation. It's, it's the measuring you in how much of currency you have in likes followers and blue check marks 
It's constantly chasing after perfection that isn't there. It's mental. Oh my God. First of all, Debbie, breathe. Building or trying to build an online relationship mostly stay that way. Accept it and expect it. Because you guys never really had a offline relationship. A man texts a woman something cute and smart. He Googles it and texts it to her. Most of us women love it. Oh, he's so charming. He's so eloquent. In real life, you're not that sharp. You can't excuse yourself from a situation such as dinner or a hooker lounge bar. In your case, do some research and call back with a clever response. In real life scenarios, you end up sitting across each other, staring and not saying a word. Now, that doesn't make you weird, but that's what happened. Shit happens. Especially when your entire method of communication is based on online texting, phone texting, email texting. It takes away the ability to think, to be human, to treat in real time, which leads to fear to interact and date in the real world. It's time to get off social media as well, don't you think? And <laughs> go outside. <laughs> Thank you for your call. Yeah, it's Dominic. Hey, Dom. Talk to me. You never date a dude like me, right? I'm in a 250 pounds, but I'm working on that. I've got a job, and I give good foot massages. So can we hook up or what? Okay, Dom, I'm a little bit old-fashioned, so let me break it down for you. I like gentlemen, sophistication even more. That means making an effort and asking me out face-to-face. -face. And yeah, you're quite big. I don't want to be crushed during sex. It's like a T-Rex doing a freaking house cat. See, I knew it. You're all about money, arrogance, and you're way too serious. You probably have daddy issues. I like nice things. I like to attract a comfortable, nice life, Dom. I work hard for it. There's nothing wrong with joining forces and becoming a power couple. Don't get me wrong. In combinations with fucks and smiles and daddy issues is a sentence created to make women feel unworthy. Fucks and smiles? What do you mean? Yes, fucks and smile. The main ingredients in a healthy relationship, fucks and smiles. You come home from a bad day at the office, in a financial sector, in a fast food drive, fast food shop, in a <laughs> airport as an employee, whatever. You have that person at home waiting for you to turn that frown upside down and make you laugh and forget about all your problems. Because a smile will get you through the tough times. And there will be tough times. In a relationship with equality, a reason a person will cheat in that relationship is if the sex is whack. I don't care how much money you have or how big you are. As you, Dominic, a person will risk all to come so hard, their feet will curl into a ball, their eyes will roll back into their skull, revealing the whites of their eyeball like you're going into a fit. Fucks and smiles, Dominic. If you find a person with those qualities, hold on to them with everything you have because you have found the one so you haven't answered the question my queen you want to hook up or what mm, you make me want to touch myself so bad right now oh my god really i'm gonna jump in the car right now i'm on my way to you no i'm a demi sapiosexual call me back when you find out what that means goodbye nantier and totsins 
We'll be back after the break too with You Are a Mess. When I was a young girl, I went to Sunday school a lot. And the older I grew, I got the chance to teach the young kids themselves as a teenager. And one of my favorite Bible texts was for, I know the plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This passage always resonated with me. It gave me comfort and that better days are coming and that all the dark days will be filled with joy. I stand behind feminine rights as I root for Black China, a.k.a. Angela White, who removes her fillers, her butt shafts, and becomes a woman of positivity. But I root for me, that I'm able to say no when I want, yes when I want, yeah when I want, and you should be able to do the same too. But I stand against picture and text dating for a prolonged time. In fact, I don't condone AI dating because all human emotions and true efforts are non-existing. But at the other hand, I'm online too, talking to y'all. I know it's hypocritical, but aren't we all? We devote most of our precious time posting selfies and voyeuristic non-existing friends on Facebook, IG, who don't give a fuck as much as we do at them. There is no book on this game called life. Just write the best chapter you can. In closing, in coming to an end of my story or keeping my story short, I do know this. All of us are selfish and we're hurting. Consumed with hate and bigotry, ego, narcissism in our own lives. In the middle of all, we still have compassion to reach out and help someone else in need, even if we're going through it ourselves. So all is not lost. There is hope and a future. Thank you so much, listeners and callers. And see you soon on You Are a Mess.